Well everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and welcome to Welcome to the Wasteland, my weekly show where I take a deep dive into a particular film and continuing this trek through John Ford for 2024. It's the last, actually, so this is going to be the first one for the month of July, which means there's six more months of this. <laughs> I hope you all enjoy. Wow. But joining me for this episode is my ride-or-die guest, my wife Jess. Thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome, Shane. And Jess is filling in here for my episode on Three Godfathers, which we'll be getting to. But for those who don't know, we have three segments on the show. We have coming attractions for the week of July 5th. It's the 4th of July week. What possibly could be coming out? And then we'll be jumping into our main attraction, or film, feature <laughs> film, Three Godfathers. And then we have some recommendations for you. Now, for this week of July 5th, this big box office, usually weekend, hopefully things look good, and I'm sure it will be because we have Despicable Me 4 coming, and people love Minions, well. so I'm sure the Minions and Inside Out, too, will probably mm -hmm. still continue to make tons of money. Over on Netflix, we have Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F., so we have a new sequel to mm. Beverly Hills Cop with Eddie Murphy coming back. We have a silly space comedy, it looks like, Space Cadet coming to Amazon starring Emma Roberts. Some smaller films like The Secret Art of Human Flight. But Jess, what are you most looking forward to? I'm most looking forward to Maxine. Why? I like the other two. Fair. I'll probably like this one. Which, uh -huh. speaking of X... And Pearl, mm -hmm. uh, Ty West's other two films with Mia Goth focusing on this particular story. And now we do have Maxine, who's made it through the events of X and is out in L.A. now. And there's a serial killer on the loose. It looks cool. It's neon. It's like sharp. Cast. cast is great. There's a lot, like, Kevin Bacon's in it. Um, mm. Giancarlo Esposito. I do like those character posters. Yeah. Halsey is in this as well. We're going to have to see what's going down in this film. Who's the killer? We're going to say who's going down. There might be plenty of that. You don't know! <laughs> there always is. We'll have to see. <laughs> but by the time this episode comes out, I'm sure many of you will have already seen Maxine. The film that I'm most looking forward to is Kill. From the... It's from... Nikhil Nagesh Bhatt, and this is a new Indian action film set on a train mm -hmm. where a commando and the love of his life are on this train. She's betrothed to another, and then a bunch of bandits invade the train, and he has to do his best to protect everybody. And this looks like a crazy, crazy action flick on a train. Uh, plenty of bodies, plenty of blood. Actually... I literally just watched this this morning as we were recording, so <laughs> it's very fresh in my mind, and I'm sure it'll deliver whatever people want out of this movie, which is crazy action, great choreography, this claustrophobic feeling of being on a train, and some wild kills, for sure. So, got a little action, got a little horror thriller, we got minions, we got plenty coming for this 4th of July week. What a for variety. Friday. What a variety indeed. Maxine's actually coming out on Friday the 5th. I guess Thursday night the 4th. And then I think Despicable Me's coming out like Tuesday night into Wednesday. Because mm -hmm. they really want to milk that. Um, and Beverly Hills Cop is coming out on Netflix on the same day as well, if I'm not mistaken. So on the 3rd that Wednesday. So all across the week, plenty of movies. But we're here to talk about our feature film, which is the 1948 John Ford classic, Three Godfathers, which this is Technicolor. This was a beautiful oh, yeah. color film, which there haven't been many so far up to this point on this journey through John Ford, starring John Wayne, Pedro Armanderas, and Harry Carey Jr., mm. who was pretty young at the time, and this is like his fifth or sixth film that he was in. This is based on a 1913 novelette that has been adapted 
a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, it seems mm-hmm. like a lot. This is actually a retelling of the biblical story of the three wise men. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's what it's getting at. And in the film, it leans into yeah. that thematically pretty well because these are still religious folks here. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least some of them. We have Ford previously adapted this story as the Marked Men in 1919, Mm. except it's a lost film, so I didn't cover it on Mm. the show. This was in memory of Harry Carey Sr., who passed away the year before. He was a big star in early John Ford films, and his son getting to be a part of this film. He couldn't have been that old, because his son's not that old. Hmm. As Jess says this, as both Robert De Niro and Al Pacino have babies well, at 80. Well, uh, look, it is a new era. So. We have modern medicine now. Didn't you have a relative you looked up that had babies at 70? Um, I did, yeah. So. Good old Hugh, Hugh Torbert there. We have, this was shot in Death Valley, California, the home of The Undertaker. Um, <laughs> except this takes place in Arizona. Uh, Carrie Jr. was verbally abused a lot on set by John Ford. Mm. Kind of a dick move. Mm. Harry Carrie actually starred in an adaptation of this novella back in 1916. And Ford's version is a more sentimental version of this film, which there's, I think it was a 30... From 1936, there was another version of this story that Leonard Malton said had a lot more bite to it. This Mm. one's a lot more sentimental. Mm. They softened this film. They actually killed people in the robbery in, like, Mm. the source material. So, like, they're not that bad of guys (laughs) in this one. So that's kind of the approach that they took with this. But, Jess, what are your general thoughts on Three Godfathers? I thought this was a very sweet Sweet film. I was a little surprised coming from John Ford and John Wayne, how uh, tender it was at some moments, but mm-hmm. it was it was very nice. So this is actually a, what influenced Tokyo Godfathers. I was going to ask The about film, that. Satoshi love, Kon's film. I love that. Which, the basic idea is these three bandits, you know, rob a bank and are out in the desert and find a woman who gives birth to a baby. She dies and they have to take care of the baby. Mm. So you have three grown-ass men who (laughs) don't know what the hell to do between the three of them. Luckily there's a book. There's a book, which John Wang doesn't agree with. Um... And is is I mean, a, some of it's questionable. Should you rub well, your baby now. with? Yeah, should you rub your baby with axle grease? Mm, probably not. It didn't say axle grease. It, just it said, said some kind of olive grease. oil. And if you don't have olive oil, lard or tallow, but they didn't have that either. So they, just, they used but wagon yeah, grease. grease. I don't know. I'm, I feel like. What is baby Italian? <laughs> rub them, rub them deep with olive oil. If they're Greek, you spit on them. There you go. Ward off the evil eye. But there's definitely tender, sweet moments, especially in, like, the 20-so-odd minutes right after they find the baby. Oh, yeah, and they try to figure it out. And they have this sequence in the film where it's like they're figuring things out, and, like, John Wayne's even getting, like, a little, like, oh, like, don't leave me with this baby (laughs) kind of moments. And there's a lot of great banter between the three characters in particular, uh... Robert, Pedro, and William, because the baby is named Robert, William, Pedro, um, Hightower, Hightower. which is fun. Then there's definitely those kinds of moments, and then there's big emotional moments as we get into the third act of this film, and we experience what's happening with them desperately trying to find somewhere to take care of this baby. Mm -hmm. But I think the film does a good job at the beginning, the credits set up well it sets up the landscape and everything it even has a little homage to harry carey in it senior and then we have this great opening moment where they ride in the town and they're chit-chatting with yeah. ward bond there's a ward bond sighting he's actually a pretty big piece of this film and they're just shooting the shit with each other having fun and then all of a sudden wife brings out his marshal vest and has his badge on and vibe changes real quick. And, you know, I really enjoyed that banter between the four actors, especially between John Wayne and Ward Bond. They've certainly been in plenty of films together. Some good old guy bullshitting there. Old guy bullshitting right there. 
Then they do the robbery, and there's a really great chase that's yeah. really well shot throughout the desert. There's these great shots of, like, the camera on the wagon with the lawman mm -hmm. pointing out towards yeah, them. Pretty right. cool. So there's some really well shot action and also you really get a good sense of the technicolor here because mm -hmm. like this thrilling action just in bright color just looked fantastic. Mm -hmm. But it's the big emotional moments. It's the second and third act that really work best for this film where you really settle into what this movie's about, which is a woman gives birth and they're taking care of these taking care of this baby. Mm -hmm. And you know, they cut back and forth between Ward Bond and his posse a decent amount. There's some fun, like, comic relief there and stuff like that. But it's really, I think this film really kicks into gear with the third act where they're trying to pass this salt lake. Yeah, the salt flat. Yeah, and it's devastating. And there's some really good acting going on between Carrie and Armanderas and Wayne in their, like, slowly dying yeah, that, acting. that not only dehydrates you, but it stings. Like, they were... They're not intense. They were not in good shape, and it was a really intense mm -hmm. moment. And there's big emotional moments, and there's this one last interaction between Wayne and Armanderas, which I th was great, and then there's... Like, you can tell, like, he had just broken his leg. Mm -hmm. There's no way he's getting out of this, mm -hmm. and he knows it. And you just hear a gunshot, and mm -hmm. it's just, like, that emotional moment. And I appreciate, like, how this layered in the three wise men mm -hmm. kind of elements to this story through the Bible. Because you have William, the young man who's the one who really cares about reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. And John Wayne's character, Robert, has to go on this journey to really appreciating mm -hmm. it and stuff like that. The ending is very softened, and it's like a nice, good, happy ending. Yeah, they tie it up in a neat little bow. T uh, neat little bow. Great moment, though, in this bar when uh, Robert John Wayne's character finally finds civilization <laughs> and, like, just turns around, just, like, poosh, falls flat. And, you know, you have, like, the hokey, like, trial and stuff like that, mm -hmm. where it's, like... Big fun. At the bar. And yeah, at a bar, which was really funny in that case. It's such an entertaining film. It has mm -hmm. good emotional moments. It has a great heart to it, which is not something like I would say about a lot of John Ford films to be so like heart-focused mm -hmm. and centric on that. But he could do it, and he could do mm -hmm. it well. This He's film really showed that. What other thoughts do you have on Three Godfathers? I think that's it. It's a pretty straightforward, sweet film. Yeah, it is definitely straightforward. It has a good story. has an interesting concept. Three men and a baby. Um, That's it, yeah. Which obviously... Yep. Uh, it would, be, would have been interesting if they adapted this into a Western with uh, Steve Gutenberg, Ted Danson, and um, Tom Selleck. Oh, did they? Oh, the movie Three Men and a Baby? The movie Three Men and a Baby. Okay. It's the basic idea, isn't it? Yeah, just in different settings. Yeah, this movie's literally Three Men and a Baby. So, I'm pretty sure Three Men and a Baby had to have gotten some influence from the original story, Three oh, Godfathers. Yeah. But no, this definitely has been retold a lot of times. John Ford does a great job bringing this to life. And it was really cool seeing the Technicolor elements of, like, John Ford, like, really popping. Because, like, I've always been a big fan of The Searchers, so I've been mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing, like, the great like, Technicolor Westerns of John Ford. So, we're in it now. We made it. And Jess is going to be on the next three epi uh, next two episodes after this. Uh, she wore a yellow ribbon. will be our next mm -hmm. one for next week as we release. So, looking at this, then, heading into our recommendations. Jess, what would you like to recommend? Um, I would like to recommend The Acolyte. I'm enjoying the action, and the swipes are great. I love them. <laughs> Yeah, they're real, the most recent episode, which was episode 5 that we watched this morning as we were recording. Great, great fight. Really leaned into the... There's a great uh, lightsaber action. There's a lot of twists and turns as we're getting to like the middle of the season here. And yeah, it felt like really old school Star Wars mm -hmm. with some like great edits with the sweeps. Mm -hmm. Those PowerPoint transitions are fantastic. And they're like... 
they're out of place, but also uh, they're not because it's Star Wars. Just the way that they're just like. Whew. I'm one of the people that do, does appreciate that they're trying to do something different mm -hmm. with the show, mm -hmm. but not everybody wants them to do anything different with Star Wars. Apparently, if you can, if you have the ability to get out of your own way, I really enjoyed the fights in this episode and the last episode. Yep, and. That's really setting up, there's three episodes left, I guess, and it'll be very interesting to see where things go, mm -hmm. as we know our enemy now. Mm -hmm. So, I have some, I have three recommendations, so new film I want to recommend is The Vower de Lock, which is a new horror film that's very vintage, like, old school vampire movie. Mm -hmm. Even to the point where, like, the vampire in it's, like, a puppet. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so creepy. Yeah. And it has, like, really old-school horror elements. It has that, like, gothic kind mm. of foreboding atmosphere. It's bloody. It's creepy. It's mesmerizing at times. It's f got a French guy who's very, very, <laughs> very French. It's in French, isn't it? Yes. And this takes place in, like, probably Romania. Um, they didn't give specific... Like, it's Eastern it's like European. It's like 1700s-ish era, based on... It's the one with the dandy in it, right? Yes. Yeah, based on the dandy's yes. French court apparel, probably mid to late 1700s. Does that have to do with it being in Romania? Um, no, it's just I wanted to flex that I, I'm okay at dating. <laughs> okay. French court dress. There you go. But no, this will probably... Um, most of you will probably see this on VOD when it rolls around because I... Unless you're in L.A. or New York, I don't think you're going to wind up seeing this in a theater. But it's a really creepy and, like, great homage to, like, those old school mm -hmm. kinds of gothic horror films. Mm -hmm. Next up from my watch list was The Mark of Zorro. Mm -hmm. This is from 1940, and it is so much fun. What a swashbuckling... It is good the time. swashbuckling good time. The action in it, the sword fighting, is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Tyrone Power is ridiculously charismatic as Diego, uh, Zorro, our hero, and Basil Rathbone as the antagonist, which what a name. he has like the award for best movie name. That that's an actor's name. It's in, mm -hmm. it's crazy, and the sword fighting in it is incredible. It has some heart. It's a, tinges of romance and it's about freedom and standing up to tyranny and we love that maybe a little nepotism it's fine don't worry about it <laughs> yes this is about one rich family getting don't, screwed don't over by another worry rich family about it. and then one of my films that i rewatched recently that i own is sex lives and videotapes mm -hmm. i have this on criterion There's from great you must remember this episode's about that oh steven soderbergh who is one of the best filmmakers working today. This film is a very intriguing exploration of sexuality um, through the lens of an impotent man, played by James Spader, who interviews women about their sexuality, hmm. and that's the only way that he can get aroused, mm -hmm. is watching these videos and stuff like that. And he comes in to play with Andy McDowell's character, who's very prudish, unlike her sister, who likes to hoe it around. Good for her. Um, and it's about her discovering, rediscovering her sexuality hmm. and her connection. And it's very, very vulnerable and interesting film. There's a lot of twists and turns and interesting character dynamics. Uh, Andy McDowell's husband, played by Peter Gallagher, really young Peter Gallagher, that really threw me off because I didn't remember who he was when I watched this for the first time, and who's having an affair with his wife's sister. Wow, buddy. So, like, there's a lot of wow. layers, a lot of layers. He's, like, That's big rude. time, wears the suits, 80s kind of corporate guy, versus this vagabond, bohemian friend of his, James Spader, who's all about sexuality and stuff mm. like that. It's interesting. It's engaging. It'll... If you're the kind of person that isn't very open with sexuality, this will probably push a lot of buttons and maybe push you into, like, an interesting space to try to really reflect upon those things. Mm. In general, it's a fantastic film. 
it's no wonder, like, this is one of the films that really shot off Steven Soderbergh's career back in the 80s. But that is another episode of Welcome to the Wasteland, John Ford edition. We'll be back with so many more oh, before so many. we finally get to Wes Anderson in 2025. Spoilers. And if you want to have any kind of say over who's going to be the director <laughs> after Wes Anderson, go check out my Instagram, The Wasteland Viewer Instagram page, where I'm doing daily stories where you can vote on who's going to be next. Hmm. But Jess, thank you so much for joining me for another episode. You're welcome. And thank all of you out there for always tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.